How does inflation impact your retirement? Today we are going to discuss how to evaluate your retirement income and how to plan for inflation appropriately. Stay tuned. All right, Anthony, so inflation, a lot of people know what it is. Essentially, it's rising costs over time. Of course, we're seeing, in many ways, record-breaking inflation numbers, right. at least in recent history. But let's look at some averages. So um, inflation from 1913 to 2009 averaged about 3.1% a year. Right. Now, how does this translate into real world application? That means basically prices are doubling every 23 right. years. So if someone retires at age 65, their costs might double by the time that they reach 88. Right. Right. And this has people worried because inflation in 2021 was 7%. Right. Yeah. So it much higher above the average. Now, will it last that, that high? We don't know that, but it's still a concern for people. Now, we categorize, you know, underestimating inflation as one of the five biggest right. retirement mistakes that retirees need to look out for. Because, again, yeah. it's one of those things where it's really sneaky, right? You may not see it day to day, yeah. but over time, it really starts to compound and add up. Yeah, and, and we'll post to that guide because people can download it. And underestimating inflation is one of the biggest mistakes that retirees do do make. But what I actually want to take you through is is just a, a plan, right? Sure. So how might a retiree evaluate that? So we're going to look at this chart. And basically, just to give you some context, this particular couple, um, they're, they're going to be retiring in about three years, right? The way that their plan is set up is um, they have enough to get them out to age 95 in terms of their direct income sources uh, and also their investments, but it's also very close. They don't have a huge amount of cushion. Okay, so here, here's what we want to look at is when we're estimating their expenses, we're estimating that those expenses are going to rise mm -hmm. at, you know, three to four percent per year, sure. at least looking at the averages. Which is interesting that you bring that up because when we did retirement planning for folks several years ago and we brought up the notion of using three to four percent inflation in their right. retirement plans, like, why are you using that high of an inflation rate? Right. It's been like <laughs> sub two percent. Are you right. kidding me? Right. Now my plan doesn't look good at all because you're using this high inflation rate. Right. And so using something where we were dependent on those averages because, yeah, you're below two percent. Now we're above seven percent. So here's the thing, though, where most people miss it when it comes to retirement planning is when you look at when you look at the blue area here and then also the light blue on top of those those are direct income sources specifically for this couple it's social security and then they have a pension mm. okay what you'll notice is that they're not increasing they're much flatter than the overall expenses in terms of how fast those are increasing okay so people often look and they go okay well this pension and the social security makes up a good amount of what i need in to the live beginning on. in the beginning in the beginning exactly and then you start to see this spread, which is the yellow and the and the orange over here. That's their investments in what they need to make up the gap. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes right. we see a lot of retirees make is they look, they're all you know, they're almost like tunnel vision. Right. They look at that first year of retirement. I've been working for 40, 50 years. I'm ready to take the plunge into retirement. And I've got all my income mapped out for that first year. Right. But they're failing to see the big picture and how this might compound. So let's take a look at some solutions, right? What should people be thinking about when it comes to inflation, when it's staring them down here in the face of retirement? And the, the first thing we have here is take inventory of your income sources. Yeah, so whatever those income sources are, like Social Security applies to, to many people. Do you have a pension? Do you have maybe rental income? And, and what is the cost of living adjustment in there? People will get a pension, for instance, and having a cost of living adjustment versus not having one is a is very, very big, big deal. Very big deal. Social Security also does not tend to keep up with the real cost of rising prices. Yep. Now, the second thing we have here is investing to outpace inflation. Right. And so we don't want to be overly conservative with how we in invest. We need things like generally need things like stocks or, you know, commodities or real estate, things that have a, a, an equity ownership that can grow and outpace inflation over time. Now, number three, we've talked about this before, but even with interest rates being very, very low, having a good chunk of stable investments in your portfolio. Right, having that short-term need met in more conservative, stable investments, this helps you be a better investor, right? So combining with number two, it allows your stocks to work for you when they are in that major dip, which is inevitable. Having that short-term stable 
cash, bonds, things like that, that you can reach into uh, for that immediate income. Again, number four, Social Security is a big part of folks' retirement plan. And the, the key here is making sure you time it correctly. Right. Most people don't realize that by deferring Social Security, at least up till, you know, all the way up to age 70, when it really maxes out, every year that you wait, is about a seven to eight percent increase by waiting. Now, does it always make sense to wait? No, but at least keeping that in mind is important. All right, number five, minimizing debt. Right, and we wanna take a balanced approach to investments. Some people will say, well, take on as much debt as you can at really low rates, and then therefore, you know, that debt becomes less, you know, as inflation goes up, but you, you really wanna be able to manage cash flow and not be restricted by debt payments. And the last two, establishing appropriate cash reserves and living within your means. Right, so still having a cash reserve, and even though it, it might be very low interest rates in the bank, it's something to lean back on and being able to use that cash to help smooth out, smooth out the bumps, but be very purposeful about it. Because the other thing can be a, a risk as well is keeping too much in cash where you're really not earning yeah. on anything and losing real value. So again, to, to summarize here, what we have is take inventory right. of your income sources, social security, pension, et cetera. Then what we want to do is look at investing to outpace inflation, right. right? We need to take a little bit of risk to get the growth to beat inflation long term. But we also want to invest enough in stable money so that mm -hmm. we can ride out any of the bumps and the fluctuations along the way, right. right? At least what we've been seeing year to date so far here in 2022. We want to really think strategically about Social Security, the timing, when to take it. Sometimes right. it's best to delay up until age 70. Again, minimizing your debt, the worst thing, well, one of the worst things you can do is go into retirement with a bunch right. of debt, making sure you have adequate emergency reserves and making sure that you're living within your means. Absolutely. And now let us know what you think. Does inflation have you worried about your retirement plan? Let us know in the comments below. And if you have any ideas for future videos, please let us know. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.